This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everybody. This is Greg Morton. It is Sunday, May 1st, 2022. And then this is the weekend video update for CanSlim Growth Stock Investors from the Greenville East Side IBD Meetup Group and Stockyard Meetup Group. So as always, not recommend any stocks or securities to buy or sell. It's for educational purposes only, and particularly right now all investing has substantial risk of big losses. So we wanna learn first and only then invest. So today we'll look at the M factor like we always do. What do we see this week? You know, constructive action or destructive action. Um, we're just back to a massive train wreck out there. We'll look at some charts. You know, the leading names are just getting trashed. And I'll go over real quickly um, the availability of our educational materials. So the M, as O'Neill teaches us, is the most important letter in Can Slim. Key principle, their research shows that three out of four stocks follow the general market trend, and um, I've never seen anybody doing research that contradicted this. I think in a bad market, um, maybe like now, <laughs> that goes to like nine out of 10, um, so it's even worse. So we have to stay in step with the trend, otherwise we won't get a bad outcome. As I said last weekend, and using the the nine out of 10 not doing well, you know, you wouldn't get on a ship getting ready to sail into a storm if you knew that only one out of every 10 is going to make it through that storm. Um, just not our odds. So it's very difficult, pretty much impossible to win on the long side when the trend is not your friend. And even strong swimmers have issues going upstream. This is sort of where we are right now serious bear market mouth waiting to gobble up the swimmers that are wading in or swimming in. So to look at the impactor, O'Neill says we use three things in this order of priority, the action of leading stocks, which we just don't really have any of those right now, um, just almost nil actions of stocks owned. Um, the group teaching portfolio did dip our toe back in after the rally day because my rules allow that. We'll see that may not work at all. Then market pulse, distribution day count, price and volume on the indexes, as well as the coloring book is incorporated into that. So let's hop out of here and take a look. We'll go to Market Smith first. Um, this is the NASDAQ. Oop, nope, sorry, it's not NASDAQ, it's Merck. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So here's this week. Um, two really ugly days this week, just plunging low range um, closes. Don't look very good at all. So coming down there, closing at the bottom of the range, taking out these lows over to the left, moving average lines are all in the wrong order. 10, 21, 50, 200 are stacked wrong. Bearish crossovers um, are the death cross, as some people call it, when the 50 goes over the 200. Um, RS lines heading down, accumulation distribution. Um, I mean, the advancers versus decliners lines look bad. Just nothing pretty out there right now. And if we look at the weekly, we can see, let me turn this back on. That looks like um, working on the third leg down now looking at the, the weekly chart. And on the daily chart, um, going back, we're we're now, this is 25% um, off. So we're, there's bear market territory at 20% off at that red line. So we're down here now. So that's not looking good. S&P 500 um, has undercut most of the chart when we look to the left, um, coming down. Again, let's look at this weekly chart. Yep, sort of have the same thing. Looks like working on the third leg down. And we can have more than three legs down. It's, it's no set number, but most bear markets have three. So the NYSE, um, it's just now in correction territory, closing there again as it did over here. Its RS line looks better. So the commodities and the cyclicals have been holding it up. That's where the strength has been. Dow back to 10% under, again, um, its relative strength line looks better compared to the other ones. Russell um, coming down toward that 25% offline, looking bad too. 
as well as the S&P 600. So if we flip over to the coloring book, um, just lots of red days. I think I switched that. I think the distribution days were on the S&P and Dow, so I've, I've got to fix that date. But um, we only have six buying days, 12 selling days. Distribution days are piling up. Um, this week we had two rally days, and then they both immediately failed um, within a couple of days. So market school exposure is at zero. The window of opportunity is closed. And then the high-low indicators on the NASDAQ and the NYSE are both in red territory also. And we had two bad days this week. So Tuesday, NASDAQ was down 3.95%. Dow was down 809 points, 2.83%. And then on Friday, it just happened again. NASDAQ was down 4.17%, even more. And the Dow was down um, 939 points, or 2.7% percent so more points little lower percentage um, due to how the numbers work so just nothing pretty there either and the group teaching portfolio um, only about 18 percent invested and just because after the rally day um, went back into Merck as it broke out and then a little bit um, in this recent IPO EE and we'll just see. We may get pushed back out of those pretty pretty quick. Still down 8.87% year to date. Um, you know, the NASDAQ's down over 20%, but our, our goal is to still be up. So um, having a tough year over here still, although not as tough as the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So we'll go back over here. We looked at all that. Um, windows, here's just, these are the key red notes. Window of opportunities closed. IBD is in correction. All those MMTSs are solid red. Distribution days are racking up with clustering. Market school models to zero. Buy sell day count is six buying, 12 selling in the 25 day window. So the sellers are in control. As Mark Minervini talks about, it's a distribution dominant tape. Um, it is not an accumulation dominant tape. Matt Caruso's high low indicator has been showing NASDAQ weakness and it was showing nicey strength. Now it's actually flipped to red, so I should have changed that. Um, two rally days this week on its index and all of those failed. Charts are getting whacked. Um, growth was already in the bear market and the rest of the market has now catching up and actually I think caught up. So lots of red lights out there still, still, and we're back to just a flat out train wreck. So could take a little while to clean things up. I'm not gonna predict, could have more rally days Monday and follow through days on Thursday. We'll just have to see, but we do have the um, Fed meeting this week. So Tuesday and Wednesday, to me, the day before and the day of the Fed meeting are always very hard days to trade it seems like there's a whole lot of volatility except when we're in a nice uptrend nice uptrend um, it's not as bad but that's not where we are right now so a lot of headline risk out there fed talk and now the fed walk how fast how far are we going to go on rates balance sheet reduction inflation um, supply chain issues our q1 earnings season has started big week coming up a lot of names but we've seen just stocks getting crushed. Um, Netflix, um, Amazon, you know, these are these are stocks down 10% or more, so not good at all. War situation, day 67, and we're hearing a lot about companies that have Russia exposure in the conference call. So hop out of here. We'll just look at a few charts. See what all I put in here. Those are some examples. So ARC um, just been getting killed. They keep averaging down, so they're 64% off the high in their main um, interrupt, disruptive um, innovation fund. Netflix, I mentioned that, let's go to the daily. So just super ugly. What was that gap down? 35% um, in a day. Wow. So some of these names, Coin, 
oh, these are just terrible charts. Roadblocks, I mean, just diving. This is why we have cell rules. <laughs> Path, terrible. Upstart, terrible. You know, giving back all all these gains. Um, Merck, this is one that was holding up and actually um, came through the sloping trend lines on earnings, tried to break out Friday and the, the market slapped it back down, but um, at least it held um, with the NASDAQ down over 4%. That was, did sort of hold in there and this is a can of slim stock, so we'll see how it does. And then the coal stocks, some of these are holding up and then some of them are not holding up. So just getting hit everywhere. The uranium plays, they got slammed. Um, we got knocked out of all of those, did not work, stopped out per the rules. And then here's EEE, that recent IPO, which now, um, turn this off. So the IPO base has showed up within Market Smith. So um, it's just 10 days long. That's when it shows up at the end of the 10th day. So that happened on Friday. Got 22% deep IPO base and maybe kind of could draw a slope and trend line on there or, or maybe it forms a little handle in here. But, um, and it's in the, you know, commodity area, natural gas, they're, they're a shipping company and then they, um, the ships sort of have processing plants on the ships. So we'll just see how that one plays out, but very difficult um, out there right now, for sure. Go back. So um, our last meeting, I will get the May one set. I'll try to get that on the calendar today. So April 12th was our last meeting. So you'll be able to sign up for the May one when I get it up at the Stockyard Meetup site. The meetings are 12 bucks for the big monthly meetings where we cover all this in a lot more detail. And then those can be ordered after the fact also. And if you never come to one of our meetings, if you come to the one in May, I send you the April meeting information, recording and slide deck. So here's the things we covered in April. Here's a list of prior educational topics. Um, in bear markets, it's a great time to do research and study. So there's three in there on writing cell rules. If you don't have a set of written cell rules, probably had a big drawdown recently. Um, so it's good to get those and study those. We spent three months covering that. How did to have a weekend review, follow up on that. So these were some of the main ones. So here's contact information, couple meetup sites, Greenville Eastside, IBD. That's the one I run with IBD. The Stockyard, you can email me um, at that address about information for ordering any of those prior meetings that you want. I'll just send you the list and the instructions. You can follow me on Twitter. And then of course you're watching this on my YouTube page. So be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done it. And that's it, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good weekend routine. Um, big earnings week, big, big Fed week. Um, and the market's just really, really volatile still right now. But that could change next week or it could just continue. That's it.